So chapter five um, is about polynomial rational functions. And the, this section will work its way from some of the stuff you, we have done already. Um, but this book is just laid out a little bit different than the one we were using uh, in chapter one. Um, first off, we're going to talk about quadratics. We're going to talk about polynomial and power functions, graphs of polynomial functions, dividing polynomials, zeros of polynomials, and rational functions. So we've got a lot of stuff to deal with in those six sections, okay? So we're starting out today with 5-1, which is about quadratics. Now, you'll probably recall dealing with quadratics last year in your Algebra 2 class. Um, so we're going to talk about all the characteristics of the quadratics, like uh, the vertex, the axis of symmetry, and things like that. Um, we're going to talk about graphing them. We're going to talk about mins and maxes and how they relate to a quadratic. And then we're going to do a few word problems. So let's talk about the uh, main uh, characteristics of any parabola. Uh, the first characteristic I want to talk about is the vertex. Well, okay, what's a, what's a parabola? Remember, it's a U-shaped graph that we call the quadratic. The U-shaped graph we call a quadratic. Now let's start with the vertex. The vertex is this point right here. It is actually, I'm going to refer to it as the um, point HK. Okay, that's the point HK. Now, the axis of symmetry is what you see here. The axis of symmetry is this line. That line is always going to go through the vertex and is always of the uh, form x equals h. And you'll notice that in our vertex, the x is equal to h. And these shouldn't be things that you haven't seen before. Remember, the x-intercepts are where we hit the uh, x-axis, and the main thing to remember is that you have to set f of x equal to 0. I have sent a and I did send it apparently for sending the And then the y-intercept is where you plug in 0. So it's where it hits the um, y-axis. And you have to plug in 0. So it's f of 0. Now, I'm going to, uh, through the lesson, I will continue to call it HK, so it will relate back to the parent function and the way that we saw things about the parent function. Uh, remember, our parent function for this is f of x equals x squared. And we will use that to build upon the knowledge we have about quadratics.
Don't forget that x-intercepts are the same as zeros. So if I say zero, that's just the uh, fancy way to call the x-intercept a zero. Some older textbooks even refer to those as roots. So let's look at our first example. It says here, determine the vertex axis of symmetry zeros, y-intercept, and of the parabola shown. So let's just do them step by step as they have mentioned them. So the first thing they mentioned is the vertex. So always check how they're counting if we kind of zoom in a little bit. They're counting by ones, but they're only marking every other one. And so the vertex here is the point 3, 1. Now next, the axis of symmetry goes through the vertex. It is a vertical line. So you'll see that it matches the x uh, of our vertex, which is h. So it's x equals 3 is our axis of symmetry. As far as the zeros go, in this particular graph, if you look at where the parabola hits the x-axis, it doesn't, so there are none. So you would just, you know, less that there were no places where that happened. The next thing they want is our y-intercept. Our y-intercept um, happens at a y value of 7. That's technically the point zero, 07. I like to show it as a point because then it's, it's a little more helpful for some other applications. I want to talk about a little bit about this point right here before we move on. Um, this point right here is... Uh, a minimum of the graph. Uh, it is an absolute minimum. So 3, 1 is an absolute minimum. That's always going to occur when we have a parabola that is opening upward. So and that's something we'll explore uh, more later on uh, in the in the lesson. So there is example one. Now let's look at some other important qualities and characteristics, things we should know algebraically about a quadratic. So the general form of a quadratic, let's see if it'll let me get, is f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. The general form of a quadratic is f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That general form is not necessarily conducive to what we know about the parent functions. Um, it can be. We can get it into a better form, and then we'll, we'll look at that later on. 
If we wanted to find algebraically the x-intercepts are zeros and we didn't have the graph and we have that general form, you might recognize the quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now the a and b come from the general form. So the b that we're talking about is right there. The a is right there. The C is right there. So they come from the formula, uh, the quadratic formula that uses the A, B, and C coefficient values that we find in the general form. If we have the general form and we don't specifically see that H and K, the vertex is negative B over 2A, which technically is our H. So the vertex, yes, is hk, but our h is negative b over 2a. And our k is just the function where we plug in h, or the function where we plug in negative b over 2a. So we can find the h by using the b and the a from above. And then once we know the h, we can find the k, or the y value that goes with the vertex, by plugging in that h. These formulas are formulas you need. You need them now, you'll need them if you go into a calculus course. So it's important that you know those values. You can also find the vertexes x. You can see it right here. It's kind of the beginning, the front part of the quadratic formula. Keep going. So if we have this um, parabola, y equals x squared plus 4x plus 3. Let's just kind of go down and let's list everything. Now, we have a graph of it, but I want to show you how the algebra and the graph go together. So in this particular case, our a is 1, our b is 4, and our c is 3. So you can see them right here. 1, Four, three. Okay. Now that has to be in descending order, in the correct order for that to be the case. So um, our zeros, right now, we know that we can find them using the quadratic formula. So let's practice using the quadratic formula. So it's going to be negative b, plus or minus, the square root of b squared, Minus 4 times a times c, 4 times, uh, let's see, 4 times 1 times 3 is 12. And then 2 a's is just 2. And that's negative 4, plus or minus the square root of 4, which is 2 divided by 2. Now if we do it two ways, negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. I, I just don't have a lot of room to show those steps. Negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. And we can see those on the graph. Right here, our x-intercepts occur at negative 1 and negative 3. So you'll notice another way that you can do it is you can set the function x squared plus 4x plus 3 equal to 0. And we know how to solve those. Uh, we can solve those by factoring. And that factors to be x plus 3 and x plus 1, which gives us values of negative 3 or negative 1. So if you see how it's factorable, you can solve for the zeros. 
If you don't see how it's factorable and you want to use the quadratic formula, that's okay too. Now let's talk about the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is negative b over 2a. Now we still have these a, b's, and c's. We're going to plug them into there. Okay? So let's do that. So um, our axis of symmetry is going to be negative b, or which is negative 4, over 2 a's. a is 1, so 2 times 1 is 2, or negative 2. So you can see right here that our axis of symmetry occurs right here at x equals negative 2. That line right here. The next thing that we'll go with is the vertex. The vertex is that point right there. So that's our HK. Now we already found our H. Our H is right here. It's that negative B over 2A, negative 2. So let's take our function and plug in negative 2. So that's going to be 4 minus 8 plus 3. 4 minus 8 is 4. 4 plus 3. Okay, did I do that right? Let's see. Yeah, 4 minus 8 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 1, 3 is negative 1. So our vertex is the point. I plugged in negative 2. I got out negative 1. And that's the vertex you see in the graph. Okay. So the graphical information and um, all of that going together, um, the algebra and the graph should always match up. And we've, we've established that again and again as we've gone through this process, whether it was in uh, last chapter or where we go from here. You should always see that the algebra and the graphical components work together. Now, um, just a second here. I gotta. <laughs> Sorry. The uh, standard form of a quadratic function is also called the vertex form. Now, the vertex form will feel more comfortable. It looks more like what we did in chapter one with our parent functions. And it's uh, a times the quantity of x minus h squared plus k. And remember, hk is our vertex. The standard form is also the vertex form. I usually call the other one the general form, and then I, I refer to this one most of the time as my uh, vertex form, because you can see the vertex so clearly. So look at our vertex. Our vertex is sitting here and here. Now, one thing that to recall from our, um, our parent function sort of idea, do you see how the one inside the x changes sign? Because remember, the thing inside the x always does the opposite of what you think but the one on the outside has a plus by it, it doesn't change sign because the outside does exactly what you expect it to do. So if we look at this, and I'll write, let me write this equation bigger so you can really see it. Okay. If we look at this uh, equation, the a value is negative 3. Now, anytime your a is negative, it's going to flip it upside down. Okay. Your vertex then at that point will always sit at the top of your quadratic being a maximum. Our hk in this point, uh, this one is going to change sign. So instead of a plus 2, it's the opposite. You have to take the opposite of h because that's negative h sitting there. So that's negative 2, positive 4. And as you can see in the graph, our axis of symmetry is through negative 2. Our, our point is negative 2, 4. Just remember that. Okay. 
a vertex form is called a uh, standard form. You can say either one, it doesn't matter. Just note what they tell you, which one they use. Um, so remember, our parent quadratic. Our parent quadratic is f of x equals x squared. And if we use the vertex form, we can see how the vertex form will transform it. Okay. The a is going to change the direction. And it can also change the width. It can change the direction or the width. The H moves it left or right. We know that because it's on the inside by the X. The K moves it up or down. We know that because it's on the outside. So the A can change the direction of the graph or the width, and the H can make it go left or right. The K will make it move up or down. Look at this example. It says, let's try to write an equation of the quadratic from the graph. Okay, so the first thing I want you to always do is find the HK. So if we look at our vertex and the way that they're counting, that vertex is negative 2, negative The next thing we have to find is our A value. And that is probably the hardest one to find. So let's talk about how do you go about finding that A value. Well, I find um, that the easiest way to find our A is first let's write down Y equals A times X minus H squared plus so let's write that vertex form down. We know in HK, what I want you to find is some other point on the graph that's nice. Well, that point right there is a really good point. So that is just a, an XY on the graph, and that is the point um, 0, negative 1. Okay. Once you know an XY on the point and the HK on the point, We just have to do some quick algebra to find the A value. That's the only thing we don't know is our A value. And so we're going to plug in the X and Y here and here. We're going to plug in the H and K here and here. Okay, so let's plug those in. The only variable that would be missing is our A value. So that's good. So our Y value is negative 1. Don't know our a. Our x is 0. Our h is negative 2, but there's a negative in front of it, so that's going to become plus 2. The h always changes. And then the k goes on the outside as is. Okay. So now it's just an algebraic equation. 0 plus 2 is 2. When you square it, you get 4. Solve this for a. You know how to solve equations. Just solve it. So let's add 3 to both sides. So that's going to be 2 equals 4. Let's divide by 4. A is 2 divided by 4, or 1. Now as soon as you know your uh, HK and your A, we're going to plug it back into this. And then we got it. Okay. So our answer for the equation for this particular quadratic is, let's write it as f of x. 
is one half x plus two squared minus b. So you'll notice I put my h and k back in. The h changes the sign, but the k does not. And then I put my a that I found in, and there I go. So there is example two. Everybody see how I plot that? Okay, let's look at example three. Now, for example three, we have an equation that is in uh, standard form. Oh, I'm sorry, that is in uh, um, general form. We want to find the vertex of that quadratic and put it in the standard form. Well, the easiest thing we can find first off the bat is our h. So our h is negative b over 2. Okay. So in this particular quadratic, our a is 2, our b is negative 6, our c is 7. So we're just going to take that information and plug it into negative b over 2a. And so we get the opposite of b, that's positive 6. A is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, and then if you get a fractional answer, just reduce it as much as you can and then stop. That's 3 over 2. Okay. Next thing you've got to find is the K. The K is just the function, plug in, what we just found. So I am going to use a calculator. I am going to put my answer in fractional form. So that's going to be 2 times 3 halves squared. Minus 6 times 3 halves plus 7. So I'm just plugging in 3 halves because I got 3 halves with it. And we get as an answer 5 halves. Okay. Now, we have everything we need. We have the HK, so our vertex is 3 halves 5 halves. Our A, we know, is 2. The same A we start with is the same A that's in this formula for the rest of the problem. And so our vertex form is f of x equals A times x minus h squared plus 5. Let's plug in, our, plug in our A, our h, and our k, and we're good. So our answer is 2 x minus 3 halves. That h always changes. The k does not plus 5 halves. And that is our answer. We found the vertex and we found the equation in standard or vertex form. Remember, standard and vertex form are the same thing. I like to call it vertex form because that reminds me that the vertex is kind of just showing. That's example 3. Let's talk about domain and range. So, um, going back to any parabola at all, I'm going to draw a little picture. If our a is uh, greater than zero, our, so a positive number, our parabola looks like that. This is our absolute minimum. If our a is less than zero, so a negative, our parabola looks like that. The vertex is an absolute maximum. And that's going to help us find our domain and range. Okay. The domain of any quadratic is always all real numbers. You don't even have to think about it. I don't have any restrictions on what I'm allowed to put in. So the domain of this is negative infinity to positive infinity. The domain of this is negative infinity to positive infinity. There are no restrictions on what I am allowed to plug in into a quadratic or any polynomial for that matter. 
But let's take a look at example 4a. The a value is negative 5. If the a value is less than 0, I know without thinking that my parabola is pointing downwards. Remember, a negative in front flips that parabola. We learned that last chapter. So the highest value is the vertex. So without even graphing it, if I know where the vertex happens, I know what the highest value is going to be. I know where the absolute maximum occurs, so I know where the range stops. So let's do that. So let's find our h. Well, that's negative b over 2a, which is negative 9 over negative 10 or 9 tenths. Just leave it in proper fraction form. Now what's our k? Well, our k, I have to plug in 9 tenths. So I am going to use a calculator. Negative 5 times 9 tenths squared. plus 9 times 9 tenths minus 1. And I get an answer in, of 61 twenths. Okay. So what do I know? If I think about the graph of this, this is the point 9 tenths, 61 twenths. So the maximum value I'm ever going to hit is 6120s. The height is 6120s. So the range is from negative infinity up to 6120s in a bracket. Because that is the highest I have to go. Even without graphing it, the vertex is either a maximum if our front value A value is negative, or a minimum if our front value A is positive. So what's great about B, in part B, we don't have to do the algebra of the vertex. The vertex is just sitting there. It's 4 7 8 11 Because remember, our X changes sign. So that one changes sign, and 8 11 does not, or K does not. So what we know, since our a value is 2, see that little 2 sitting there in front there? That tells me that my parabola is traditionally pointing upward. So this right here is the lowest value for our range. The 8 11 is our lowest value for our range. So our range goes from 8 11 up to infinity. Put the 8 11 in a bracket because it is a point on the graph. Now we're going to stop here for today. We are going to continue this lesson um, next time that we're together. Um, this is the assignment that you can get started with. Odds 7 to 45, 67 to 73. And that's why that, that textbook that is now in Google Classroom is where you're going to find those problems. Okay, so that's a good start on quadratics. That will get you uh, going on most of the homework. Now, some of these later ones will come in the video that comes next.